Hi. Welcome to our first lesson in guitar. We're going to deal with guitar chords today. And uh, my name is Richard Rossi, and the handouts for this lesson are on the website, Amy's Flashca amysflashcards.com. Uh, Steve will be inserting some of the things I talk about so that you can see and follow along. Um, I'm going to start at a very beginning level talking about chords, assuming that you're a complete beginner. However, if you've played for a while, you won't be discounted from this uh, this class or excluded because I'm going to reference things that I think will be helpful um, even if you've played guitar for a while. Um, so we're going to start just fundamentally let's talk about what chords are and so you can understand how they function in music. Um, normally in a band, let's say a popular band like the Beatles is an example, if you usually have two guitarists and a bass player and a drummer in the Beatles case, uh, one, one of those guitarists would usually play lead. Uh, George Harrison usually would play lead. Now, lead guitar, you're usually playing melody, a lot of single string you know, stuff. You're playing that melody, that pretty higher stuff like that. Whereas the chord person is keeping the rhythm. You know, They're the person keeping that rhythm. So chord is very important. And if you're a person that wants to write your own songs or sing, this is really important because you're chording. When you're, when you're singing your, as a singer-songwriter or even performing worship songs or popular songs, you'll be chording and singing. So basically a chord is the rhythm, if you can think about it in those terms. Um, one of the meanings for the word guitar is a drum with strings. So when I chord, I think about the chords, but I'm also thinking about keeping a solid rhythm. It's very important. They call it rhythm guitar when you're chording. But also I think about what type of song it is, what type of mood or feeling the song has will determine how I play the chords. And I'll reference that in a few moments because the dynamics of chords and how you play them is something a lot of guitarists don't think about. They just play whatever the chords are and don't think about, well, what are the dynamics? How should I play these chords? So let's start with a very, very simple example of a chord. I have a handout here that I'm referencing, but Steve's going to put it on the screen for you, which is a very simple, I call it the easy form G. And if you already know the regular G, this will be a little below. Be patient for a moment. But a very simple G is just playing the G. Now on the, uh, the website, amysflashcards.com, are some of the chords, and they'll have the, the more advanced G. But just to start, if you're a complete beginner, let's do a very simple G. This is the G note. If you know your notes on the first string, you have E open, F at the first finger, first fret, G at the third finger, third fret. So that's just my G note. And I, uh, the, t the two lower strings are X'd out on the chord chart on this simple G, because we're just playing those bottom four strings. So let's play that together. We'll start a very simple, if you have quarter notes, which is four beats per, per measure, we count one, two, three, four. Let's just do one, strumming down, and I'd use a pick. If you have a pick, it'd be a little easier to learn chords than finger style. Holding it between your thumb and forefinger. One, two, three, four. Just do that simple G with me. Two, three, four. Four. So your third finger is on the third fret. These are called frets. These lines divide your guitar into frets. One, two, three. Third fret, third finger, the ring finger on the first string. So that's the simplest way you can strum, just down strokes. One, two, three, four. Now, if we wanted to do something a little bit more advanced with that G, we could do what's eighth notes, which is a one and two and three and four and a down, up, down, up. So if you're strumming your chord with the eighth notes, you'd be doing a... One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Just down, up, down, up like that. Now in popular music in the Western world, in you know, rock and roll and a lot of the popular music, emphasizes the second and the fourth beat. So if you're doing that, those eighth notes, you're kind of hitting it a little harder, slapping the strings a little bit with a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and like that. Um, so... Let's try, um, we'll do a little song in G. You got your simple G just to get started. We'll do an eighth note emphasizing the two and the four, and we'll play together. So get your G and let's go. One and two and three and four. Left a good job in the city. That's a popular song. It's hitting the two and four. Working for the man every night and day. Very simple. Now, let's go to the advanced G which we'll uh, have on the screen for you, and it's also already on the chord charts that are on the website there at amysflashcards.com. And the, this is the more advanced G. 
I'll put that on the screen for you. Um, people get it different ways. I'd recommend for starters that you get it with your first finger on the fifth string, second fret, your second finger on the lowest string on the third fret, and your third finger ring finger here. Now, some people do it like this with their pinky here and their second and third here because they do a trick where they move these fingers to go to a quick change to a C. But for now, I think probably the most common way and best way for you to get it is like this. First finger, again, on the fifth string, second fret. Second finger on the third fret on the lowest string, the sixth string. And we call the highest string the first string with your ring finger. Now let's do the same thing. There's our simple down strokes. And if you're new to chords, you might get a muting sound where you're, you're noticing some of your strings aren't clearly pressed down. That's usually, if you pick each individual string, you can see where that, that muted kind of th unclear sound is. And sometimes you have to press your finger down harder. Or another common problem is one of your fingers might be um, touching one of the other strings. So let's try our eighth notes with that G chord. So we're doing it down, up, emphasizing two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Lift a good job in the city. Keep it going. Working for the man every night and day. And I never lost one minute of sleep. Keep it going. Working for the man every night and day. I'm just playing something that'll go with you playing that other G chord. It'll sound good. So that's that's pretty much it What with, with the G chord. Now, something I want to talk about, and even if you've been playing a little while, this is really important and most uh, players don't think about this, is what's called dynamics of how you play a chord. So the type of music that you, that you are playing is going to greatly affect the way you approach the chord. And what do I mean by that? Well, dynamics, a really good drummer, for instance, really knows dynamics. If he's playing a rock and roll song or a song with a beat, he's really hitting those, those, those drums and really giving a solid beat. But let's say he's playing a jazz song or something, a love song that's a little soft. Uh, you know, if he's going to be playing, pounding rock and roll beats to a love song or a very sensitive song, He's not really thinking about the overall music and the rest of the band. So he might, you know, use brushes for a softer sound. Um, well, it's the same with guitar, for instance. Let's take this one G chord. I did a song there that was more of a rock song, so I was giving you that up-down kind of strum. But what if we were doing a country song, like a Johnny Cash song? I would take that same G chord, but I would probably do a bass strum type of thing. So try that pick your lowest string and strum and pick your fifth string and strum you see that so a country song I'm doing the exact same chord you notice my fingers and the chord are the same but it's just the way that I'm playing it is executed differently that's so Johnny Cash was famous you may recognize that kind of a sound with a Johnny Cash song why because he was a great country uh, guitarist and singer so uh, let's say I was doing a, um, a very kind of pretty love song or a sensitive song. I might have the same chord, but I would do what's called an arpeggio, which is where you play the individual strings, you know, like this. You can try that same chord. Go down. I would recommend maybe go down for three strings on your lower strings. Then start your first string and come up three, like that. And so your sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, first string, second string, third string, like that. Six, five, four, one, two, three. So a folk song, a pretty folk song, I would probably do some arpeggios like that. Like sunshine on my shoulder. See, that's a pretty song, so I'm playing individual strings. Now, most people never think about, probably about 90% of guitar players don't even think about dynamics like that. When I was a little boy, I was going to a parochial uh, Catholic school, and uh, I was talking with the, some of the nuns there about making some of the music, uh, you know, using guitars and being a little bit more modern. They were talking about transitioning to a folk mass and using guitars. And I talked about the scripture about the new wine and getting a new wine skin for the new wine, and let's try something different with the music. So I remember when I was a little boy, and I, was playing, I started playing guitar as a very little boy, the nuns all went off and got acoustic guitars and learned chords, but the problem was they didn't understand the dynamics. And they learned a strum pattern that was something like this. And the, 
problem was every song we did in the folk mass, no matter if it was a fast song, a slow song, no matter what it was, they would be going like this to every single song. And I said, you know, Sister Antonia, you've got to do a different pattern. Every song, every single song, you go like that. But that's one of the, you know, kind of things when someone's learning guitar, one of the, the things that will separate your playing from other guitarists to be better is if you think about this issue of dynamics very carefully. Um, for instance, a really, uh, in Guitar Magazine, um, had a vote from all the guitar critics and writers and experts, what's, what's some of the best guitar popular songs, and, uh, and lead, leads and guitar performances. And I, I read the article, and the number one song was Stairway to Heaven, and the guitar playing on that song. But if you, when you analyze that song, and it's a very long song, compared to most records at that time, might have been like three minutes or less. And so commercially, they thought, well, no one's going to want to listen to this song. I forget how long it is. It's probably seven, eight, nine minutes long or something. But one of the reasons it held the attention was that Jimmy Page, the guitar player who, who performs the song with the group, he worked for many years as a studio guitarist before he ever was in his band. And he was playing all kinds of music, and he understood when he was hired to play guitar what the style of music was and how he should play the chords differently. So he played everything, jazz, country, rock and roll, gospel. He knew all, all ways of approaching the chords. So with Stairway to Heaven, he, he made all the dynamics of every section of the song different. For instance, the song starts, so what is that? What am I doing? It's an arpeggio, right? Because I'm playing, here's a D chord, as an example. So he's playing it differently. So when you play your chords, think about that. He's arpeggio, and then... In the middle of the song, he gives it more jazz strum. He's doing something like this. See, it's starting to strum more. And then by the end of the song, it's really building and it's really, really fast. You know? So every section of it is changing in the way the chords are played. Well, let's move on to another chord. Um, the next chord, I wrote up a little chord chart, and, I, and there's already a chord chart on the site, but we'll show you uh, a D chord. Uh, I, I, draw, I draw, have a bunch of these chord charts I draw up and give to my students when I teach. But usually a D chord is a little easier than the G that we just did. And you'll notice on the chord chart that this string, this string and this string are X'd out, which means you're only playing this fourth string down. You've got your first string, first finger here third finger here and your your second finger here now if you you have a chord chart on the website amysflashcards.com i'd also suggest if you're going to be playing guitar for a while that you buy a chord book uh in at a music store you can find i would ask them for a chord book a lot of these chord books will show be like an encyclopedia of chords as you begin to play more the ones on the website and the ones we're putting up will probably be fine for a good while for you uh, you know, to play 90% of most music you'll encounter. But if you really want to, you know, uh, uh, get an encyclopedia of chords, they're out there where you can get a book or it'll show you virtually every chord with a picture of the hand and the chord chart. But the ones we have will be fine for a while for you. But um, once you want to learn to play and sing, it's really not that hard nowadays. You know, you can pretty much, um, you know, Steve and I were just at a music store that had all this wonderful sheet music there. And when I was a little boy, that was the only option was I would have to go downtown into this city into a place, Volkwein's Music, where I grew up, and look through all this sheet music to find chords to a song. But now you can think of just about any song you like, Google it and put the title of the song in chords, the word chords, and it'll come up. And most of the stuff online people put up there, it's about right about 80% of the time. You know, it's pretty close. And all you basically need is to, you can go on the website and look up how to play that chord, or if you have a chord book, you can look in there, and you can get started playing the chords and singing, and it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. But let's, the D chord's like this. And another thing to think about with chords, there's your straight D chord. I'll mention this as well. I mentioned dynamics, even though we're just starting to learn chords, how important it is. Another thing is that you can embellish and change chords. As an example, if you have your D and you have your fingers in place, you can make it what's called a D suspended by just adding your little finger there. You see that? In fact, Stairway to Heaven, I mentioned that song a moment ago. To build that song right before it goes into the fast part, he does a very simple trick, which is the D to the D suspended, where he goes. 
You see that? I strum the D. I strum the D twice, and then I, on my third strum, I just added my pinky. It's a very simple change. But this is another thing I want you to start thinking about right away is changing the chords. Because they studied uh, musicians that play and why some seem to kind of be kind of boring when they play or, or and other players seem to do something different that really impacts the listener. And they find that the players that are a little, a little bit more boring are, are convergent players. In other words, they just look at the chord chart and play the chord. But the... But the musicians that have impact tend to think what they call uh, divergent thinking, where they think, well, maybe there's something I could change in this chord. Maybe I could play it differently. Maybe I could add to this chord. So there's a way you can add to that, too. You can add that little pinky there. Maybe I could lift up my, uh, set my uh, finger there. See? See how I'm doing all these different changes to that one chord? In fact, James, uh, James Taylor, a great player, usually likes to capo in D and D because he says there's so many things you can do to embellish that D. So his songs tend to have that kind of feel to it. He's embellishing it a lot. He's thinking, divergent thinking, which is thinking, what are some ways I can embellish this chord and change it? And one last chord, I'll hurry up and try to sneak a third chord into you in this lesson, the E minor. Beautiful chord. Minor chords are very kind of sad and melancholy, and I love that chord. So with those three chords, you can play the song I played at the uh, beginning of this lesson, which was uh, Proud Mary. You can play the verse part, lift a good job, I'm on the G. Working for the man every night and day, and I never lost one minute of sleep. And worrying about the way things might have been. Go to the D, you ready? Get to the D, there it is. Big wheels keep on turning. Go into the E minor, proud Mary, keep on third to the G. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. So that's three chords, and it's a great song. In fact, the Beatles, one of their big hits was just that G, D, E minor. It went, love, love, love. See, so you're just singing G, love. On each of those chords, on the G, love, D, love, E minor, love, 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 love. And they, and they, was, they had a song about love, all you need is love. And they were right about that. And the New Testament is right that says, uh, God is love. And by, by love will people know that you are my disciples. Jesus said that. So um, there's a simple way that you can start learning those first three chords. Just sing those, the word love. To those three chords. Love, love, love. And I think we're almost out of time on this lesson, aren't we, Steve? So um, the handouts for this um, session are on amysflashcards.com. And uh, I'm going to do uh, some more lessons on here that you can uh, click on. Uh, we'll, we'll build on what we talked about uh, with chords. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed getting started. And uh, Steve said to mention, if you want to hear some of my music, you can go on Amazon and, and just put Richard Rossi under the music section. I have a, f a few CDs on there, The Kingdom is Near and Without Her Love and uh, Seasons of My Heart. And um, a happy guitar playing, and God bless you. <laughs>